Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Tina Marie, and today we are joined by Chef Terence Fury. Wonderful to have you here, Chef. Thanks for having me. You're going to be presenting to us a romesco sauce, correct? Yes. This dish we're going to make is with, uh, with shrimp. In this case, they're head-on um, Marvesta shrimp that mm -hmm. come from Maryland. Um, they're sustainably farm-raised indoors, basically in, in okay. big tanks. And they're never frozen. They're just harvested directly to order, basically. So they're, you know, they're never treated with any chemicals, um, and they're never, you know, they're never frozen. So the flavor is really impeccable. You're super fresh. Yes. Yeah, and super they're fresh. Marvesto shrimp. You said Marvesta is the name of the company that, okay. uh, that makes them. But they're basically a, a type of white shrimp, and they harvest them with the head on. And I like to present them with the head on. as, you know. Dramatic. Sure. Yeah, yeah it makes fun. a great presentation. Yeah. And you're known for seafood. You at, at Striped Bass. Mm -hmm. You were known for your, you know, wonderful way with seafood. Yes, it's one of my uh, my passions to cook mm -hmm. seafood. Um, uh, we grew up near the Jersey Shore, so um, you know, just have a natural affinity. Affinity of for the sea. It. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so let's get started, Chef. Okay, so we're going to talk about the shrimp. These are um, what do you call 16, 20 size. They vary a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but they're 16 to 20 per pound with the head on. So with the head off, they would be like a, a 21, 25. Okay. And we're going to have you clean them. All you do is get your uh, fingernail underneath. Right. I don't know if you've ever done this before. I have. Well, right. I've never done it with, in this state. All right. So, yes, you just have to be careful to leave because we want to leave the head on. So okay. you just go around. All right. And right. then you just pull it straight down. And I don't leave that little tail on because it's a little difficult to, uh, to eat. So sure. I take the whole shell off in one piece. So right? the shell off the body then. Right. And then when we take the vein out, what I like to do, a little trick here, is I take a damp paper towel, right? And I keep that next to me while I'm working. Yes. And you take the knife, and then we just make a gentle incision down, all the way down the back, all the way down, mm -hmm. to get that whole vein out. All right. We'll go all the way through. And then just hit the tip of the knife, able to scoop that whole thing out one shot. Great. And then you just wipe your knife off nice and clean, and then you're ready for the next one. So Excellent technique. We're going to have you uh, have you try that. Great. OK, very good. And the reason for leaving the head on, you said, because of the dramatic presentation it gives. Yeah, and also the flavor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all the uh, stuff inside the head, it kind of makes its own little sauce in there. It's delicious uh, roe and, um, you know, and all that stuff. So it's, it, it's, uh, it's definitely a flavor thing, too. And it's something I would only do with uh, very fresh very fresh shrimp. Yes, and this is the freshest you can get, oh yeah. goodness. So while you're working on that, I'll explain a little bit about the sauce we're serving with the shrimp. It's a romesco sauce. It's a Spanish-style sauce, uh, predominantly with almonds. Um, sometimes there's uh, dried bread in there or you know fried bread crumbs or things like that. But uh, we just have roasted uh, dried chilies, roasted peppers, tomatoes, roasted garlic, and uh, toasted Marcona almonds. And then it's just seasoned with a little bit of sherry vinegar and uh, extra virgin olive oil. Mm, delicious. It's a, it's a sauce with some kick to it. Definitely some kick to it. And you can make it spicy or not. And uh, let's start with the uh, guajillo chili, dried chili, which is, which is a mild chili, but it, but it adds a great depth of flavor. Uh, and uh, not, or you can also use ancho or chipotle chilies okay. um, if you want it a little more smoky. And anchos are a little more spicy. Mm -hmm. But um, all we have to do to these guys is just drop them into uh, boiling water, soften them up. Uh, we'll talk about roasting peppers. Um, yes. I, have, I have a technique for roasting peppers at the restaurant uh, and at home, which is which is really easy, which is not what we're going to do here. Okay. Good. So <laughs> we're going to learn two methods. We're going to go over two methods of roasting right. peppers. The right way and the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, the way we do roasted peppers at the restaurant is we just uh, we we drop them in the deep fryer for about two minutes until the skin blisters all around put them in a bowl and cover that and let them steam, and you're able to get the whole skin off and keep the shape. So you can use it for stuffing and making nice uh, nice strips and things like that. I love this method. I was telling you earlier when I was asking you how you did this because it keeps the pepper completely intact. Right. And nice and neat in its shape. And it doesn't absorb any, any of the oil from the fryer either because you uh, you just basically peel it all off and rinse it off, and then it's, you know. And pretty quickly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just and drop pretty it quick. in, and pretty quick it starts to blister. Yeah, and for, you know, for the home cooks, I mean, it's a, it's a little messier, but you can just char it up directly on your burner like this until it blackens all the way around. And then you uh, let it We've steam a little bit and then take the, uh, take the skin off. A method that a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, or the, uh, if you already have your barbecue grill going, if you're sure. going to grill the shrimp or something like that, you could certainly do that. Our peppers, about five minutes to soften up here. We can move those to the side. Another component of the sauce is roasted garlic and then also uh, roasted tomatoes. Okay. And that's something we can kind of combine and do, do two things at once there roast the tomatoes with, uh, with the garlic, but we'll get the garlic started in olive oil first. Okay. And we're always using 
fresh garlic that we just peel as we need it. And you just take the little, little stem off mm -hmm. and then the rest of the peel comes off and we're gonna be smashing it down anyway. So that's, that's rather easy. And the aroma from that is gonna be great. Yeah. Love the smell of roasted garlic. And did you learn, I'm sure you did, did you learn a tremendous amount of, about seafood from your time at La Berta Den? Yes, I did. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I learned a lot about seafood and about uh, perfection and cooking seafood and quality ingredients. And that's, that's what, uh, that's what La Berta Den is all about. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen. So for our garlic, we'll start some extra virgin olive oil in the pot. And we're just going to smash these down a little bit, so basically so they cook quicker. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that nice roasted garlic flavor and have wonderful roasted garlic oil to use in our sauce too. Great. And a little bit to cook the, uh, to cook the shrimp with. And this is something that you can keep too as well, right? Garlic oil? Yeah, I, I don't like to keep garlic uh, too long, okay. but um, you know, for a few days, definitely. Okay. But not much more than that. So. We're and we go. This, this is what we know. The charred. Yeah, blistering of the uh, of the pepper. Mm -hmm. So uh, for our tomatoes, we're going to use plum tomatoes, or or basically the the ripest tomato that you can find, and we just need to take out the little bit of core, mm -hmm. and cut this guy in half, and then we'll be tossing it with the with a little bit of the garlic oil. Okay. Mm, I smell that. Yeah, it gets roasted pepper. That nice charred smell. Roasted pepper and, uh, and roasted garlic. Mm -hmm. So once we get these guys, just need to get them started, and then we can fin we'll finish them off in the broiler with the uh, with the tomatoes. Great. So we will keep turning the pepper, charring it up around there, mm -hmm. and now we're going to take our tomato and just broil it to blister the uh, to blister the skin. That should take about five minutes or okay. so. Okay. So basically, get the idea here with the pepper and then just take it and throw it into a uh, bowl, mm -hmm. let it steam, peel it, and this is what we have here. We can start to assemble some of uh, the ingredients for our, for our sauce. Sauce is pretty, uh, pretty rustic, so we're gonna just do a kind of a- Rough chop? A rough chop, but not too big. You could do the whole thing in the, uh, in the food processor once you had all your, your ingredients done, but okay. I, like, I like to give it a little bit of texture. So our peppers are- Plumping. Plumping right. and softening Getting more there. Getting pliable yeah. and yeah, so able they, to work with. Yes, yeah, so we should be able to just put them into the uh, food processor. And generally all you have to do is just pull off that stem mm -hmm. and then the rest of the uh, rest of the pepper goes in there. And just add a little water. And this pepper paste adds a nice bright richness to, uh, to salsas. I can smell an earthy yeah. aroma too. Yeah, real earthy, uh, peppery aroma. Mm -hmm. That's looking good there. So we're gonna pour that out and then we can make our sauce in this bowl and add more as we, uh, as we need to. Take a look at our tomatoes, see how they're working out. Uh, a little bit longer, we can just pull the skins, pull the skins right off. But we wanna get a little, more, a little more color, a little more softness and our garlic is roasting at the yeah. same time. Yeah, okay. For the sauce, we, finish, we can start to get things going here. We have Great. our uh, roasted peppers. Yes. Chopped roasted pepper. Our Chopped roasted peppers. Almonds. Marcona almonds, which I toasted with a little bit of sea salt. Um, we get the raw, the raw ones at the restaurant. You can buy them already toasted with, uh, with salt on them. That's definitely the easiest thing to do. And these are going to get just a nice rough chop like that. And so these are some of the finished roasted tomatoes. The sauce is, you can put it together and you would want it to see, you wouldn't want to make it right before you serve it. Okay. But, um, you know, let it sit for a couple of hours, even at room temperature before you serve it. Have a look at our tomatoes, which are broiling nicely. Turn that off. And there we go. There we go. Nice Beautiful, skin yeah. peeled back perfectly. Yeah. All the skin comes off. The garlic is mm. nice and uh, nice and toasty. Okay. What we a just wonderful let those, smell. Let those cool, and like I said, you can keep them in in some of the oil for a little while. Just okay. throw them nice and tender like that. But you get the idea. 
we're going to start seasoning this up with a little bit of sherry vinegar, aged sherry vinegar, mm -hmm. and olive oil. Are you particular about the type of olive oil that you use? Yes, very, very okay. particular. Uh, I use you know different types for, for different types of things. This is a, a, a Moroccan olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's got a it's got a little bit of a spiciness, but it depends on the uh, on the on the dish. So we have a lot of different uh, a lot of different uses. And then we also we're going to add a little bit of uh, a little bit more spice to this. So we can okay. add a little bit of the um, the chili. Um. Absolutely. So the Duro chili. We love these herbs. Flash frozen and at the ready in your freezer. We'll just pop one of those in there. Okay. And then there all the go. other ingredients being nice and warm, that'll just dissolve in there real quickly. Perfect. So you can make it as spicy as you want to or or not really. See what you think about this. Um, Very good. There you go. Thank you, you Chef. Got a taste. You do a lot of tasting at the restaurant, don't you? I taste all day long. Mm. It's got a little That's a, that's actually sweet. A little bit of a, a little bit of zip I love to it. it. And we're going I want to give it a little more A little more zip? A little more depth with the um, Guajillo chilies. Mm. With all the roasting that went on, mm -hmm. the sweetness is so vibrant. Yeah. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back with more of today's recipe. A shrimp ready, to, all clean and ready to go here. And we're just going to season these with kosher salt and a little bit of red uh, red pepper. This red is pepper. A Aleppo pepper. Okay. Comes from uh, from Syria, so we have a lot of different kinds of pepper going mm -hmm. on with this with this dish, but none of it should over overwhelm. Just kind of develop layers of uh, different types of peppers for different levels of flavor, I suppose. Yeah. And you always cook with kosher salt. Uh, we'll use kosher salt and sea salt, sea salt. When, when we're searing and uh, and things like that. We always use mm -hmm. uh, always use kosher salt. And so we have our shrimp going. And these you can cook in a, ver a variety of ways. Um, we can broil them or just saute them, grill them, um, whatever. I mean, they're, they're you know, however, however you like to. It depends on the time of the year if you have sure. your, you know, your barbecue grill on and everything. We're going to add a little bit of roasted garlic oil mm. on top of the shrimp as they cook because that's awesome. And then we just can lower the heat and let the shrimp finish off slowly. Um, so. I want to prepare the finishing touch for our dish, which is going to be some fresh cilantro. Yes. You can use whatever type of herb you want. And I would like to show you one of my favorite ways to cut fresh herbs, okay. which starts with a very, very sharp knife, the sharpest knife you have. Mm -hmm. So we stack the leaves up right on top of each other. There's no rolling or any of that. Okay. All right. We just make a nice, different. Okay. A nice stack. And take my knife, all right, hold them down, keep my fingers back, and then I just slice through the herbs very carefully. All right, this is, this doesn't bruise them, keep them nice and green. So actually you're making slivers. I'm making basically julienne of, okay. uh, of cilantro. And do you, do, you, uh, do you cut all of your herbs this way? Yeah, I never use the, the rolling method right. because that puts a little too much pressure on the herbs and breaks breaks them up and will make, that's what makes them turn black is if you ah. don't have a sharp enough knife or if you bruise if you bruise them while you're cutting them. So this is, should be nice that's an and... an excellent technique, Chef. Yeah. Our shrimp are ready. We're going to let them rest on our cutting board before mm -hmm. we, uh, before we plate them. Is that important to do? Yeah, I always uh, have a habit of, you know, letting it, uh, basically drying it off or before, before we put it on put the finished plate. plate. All the cooking uh, oils and stuff, we don't want them to run on our, on our plate. All we're going to do is take our finished romesco sauce and then just make a nice even line of it down mm. the middle all right nice and clean okay and then we arrange the shrimp a beautiful dramatic presentation with the uh, yes, with the with heads the heads on and, it's and completely then fresh some of our really nicely julienne cilantro on top some great technique that you showed us here. Yeah, and then I just, to be fancy, usually we'll put a little bit of uh, the Aleppo pepper down the side of the plate. It makes it look great. It's a beautiful dish. Yeah. I can't wait to taste. I'm amazed that these shrimp and seafood that you get from this company are never frozen. Yeah. That really is uh, something that's difficult to find, certainly for a home cook. 
there's absolutely no you know fishiness at all. It's completely fresh. Yeah. It tastes like the sea. Just and if you take the head off and you can kind of mix some of the that stuff in with your sauce and the shrimp, you get a great. Oh, it's a good way of going about it great, too. Great, great flavor. And there. I love the almonds. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Marcona almonds anyway, so adding them to a sauce like this is just... Yeah, they're a great... Uh, just tops it. A great little snack. I can't keep away from those antennas. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious dish. Really, really good. Thank you so much Thanks for coming so on our show and sharing your techniques with us and your wonderful talent. Thanks for having me. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole, and today we're in the kitchen with Chef Guillermo Pirno. He is the executive chef of Corporate Cuba Libre and also of Pisco Portone. Chef, it's great to have you here. So what's on the menu today? Uh, I'm going to make a ceviche of sea urchin. Uh, sea urchin is uh, something that is not used too often for ceviches, mm -hmm. but it's very popular in Peru. Is it? So since Pisco is a Peruvian uh, Correct. Uh, libations, we're going to try to match it up a little bit. Well, I'm very excited to try this, so let's get started. Okay. So the first things I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make a chocolate sauce. You say chocolate sauce and sea urchin. Yeah. You're gonna see how it works. Okay. The chocolate sauce is actually a bitter chocolate All right. that is mixed with nutmeg, mm. stud anise and cloves, wow. um, curry, Szechuan peppercorn, Wow. toasted cumin, cumin seeds, and cinnamon sticks. Very we aromatic. also are gonna are gonna use a little bit of uh, simple syrup and with just a tiny bit of butter and let it sit at room temperature for 24 hours. Wow! And then you get a final product, which is what is in this bottle right here. Wow! So I'm gonna make an, a, a sauce that is called leche de tigre. Leche de tigre. Yeah, mix uh, tiger's, tiger's milk. milk, and it's a very very unique sauce, very Peruvian. Yes. I use uh, fresh scallops. I use this beautiful sea scallops. Scallops are going to be part of the sauce. That's right. Wow. Uh, uh, some people like to use white fish, like mm -hmm. Dover sole, okay. or they like to use sometimes clams, celery, which mm -hmm. has been peeled and diced. Also, cachucha chiles. This cachucha is a chile that, that has the, the flavor of a habanero but no heat whatsoever. It comes from the West Indies. Sounds like a dream. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love habaneros. Uh, homemade fish tuck, and sea salt. And this is our tiger's milk. That's tiger's milk. <laughs> it's a very simple plating. Okay. As you see, the we have a urchin. beautiful tray of sea urchins. Nice. So these are West Coast sea urchins. Okay. So enough for one person is about 50 grams. Also, what I have done with the pisco, I have macerated some grapes. Oh, okay. First, the grapes were peeled. And then they're macerated with fresh lime juice. Mm -hmm. I use a garistamina, okay. late harvest garistamina, obviously the porton pisco, and simple syrup. Porton is a great pisco uh, from Peru. Mm -hmm. It's basically extremely smooth. It's yes. not like the other piscos that they are, they are mm -hmm. harsh. We mm -hmm. macerate those for 24 hours, and then I slice them to make a little salad. Beautiful color. Yes, and then that's the red grapes. And these grapes. are all white grapes, or you used red grapes for this one? They are uh, purple grapes mm -hmm. and green grapes. Now we're going to put a little of the leche de tigre on top of the plate. And we just finished this that's with drops sauce. of chocolate sauce, which are, wow. has been infused. Can I taste this? Yes, of course. You taste all the spices. Wow. Isn't that unique? Very unique. All oh, the spice in there, it almost reminds me of mole. This is so unique. I've never seen anything like this before. Okay, so we have a cocktail we're gonna make next. Yes, this is a, a, a great cocktail uh, made with pisco. So jalapenos go in the dish, mm -hmm. I mean in the glass, and a little bit of rosemary. Of course, a little bit of the pisco. Mm -hmm. It's about one and a half ounces of, of porton pisco. And we're just gonna smash the flavors out of that. Muddle it up. Yeah. Agave, nectar. Okay. Fresh squeezed lime juice. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of ice. Mm-hmm. Did I find this cocktail at a Cuba Libre? Yes, absolutely. Great. Fill up the glass with ice, and then we strain it. Nice. 
Just to finish the foie gras. Okay. I have some, uh, the, the ceviche has a little bit of foie gras. Oh, wow. Uh, that I put in the freezer. This is going to be really rich. And it's a little touch up. Well, it is, but the leche de tigre mm -hmm. has so much uh, acidity. Oh, okay, so it cuts right through that foie gras. That will cut right through it. And we're wow. just going to put a couple of slices Look over. Look at that. We're just going to garnish it like so. Mm. I have a taste of the... Oh, that's delicious. Spine, spicy, it? it is, but I like it. And then now the how should, should I get it all together? Just get a piece of that and a little bit of foie gras. And with the grape also? Mm -hmm. And don't forget the grapes that mm -hmm. you like so much. And the chocolate? See how it works together? Even wow. the chocolate mm. actually enhances the citrus of the and grapes. That foie gras the... just melts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. Wow. I have another taste. I'm try to let sure you do mm. Fantastic, Chef. Thank you so much for being with us on the Chef's Kitchen. Pleasure. Love to have you again. Cheers. You. Cook something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of the Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. Flowers on the set provided by Nature's Gallery Florists, distinctive floral arrangements with European flair. I like uh, coming on the chef's kitchen to, to demonstrate tips and, uh, and techniques to uh, people so they can incorporate in their home cooking, make things easier, and hopefully they try them at home and makes it more fun for everyone.